BBC Radio Scotland. I'm Vic Galloway and this is School for Genius, the show where I take top mind magician Drew McAdam around the country's schools to show kids that the mind is a terrible thing to waste. This time around we're talking communication and to start us off, listen to this bunch. Who do you find most convincing? Yeah. Wendy Alexander says there should be a referendum now on Scottish independence. Does he agree with her? Yes. That's not what she has said. And Mr. And Mr. And Mr. And Mrs. Mr. Speaker, let me be clear. What happened is totally unacceptable in a democratic society. It must never be allowed to happen again. Order, order. Politicians are, if anything, professional persuaders. And in today's programme, we'll be looking at just those sorts of communication skills, which is why me and Mindbender McAdam found ourselves in another school playground about to give some more P7s the genius treatment. Well, that must be the bell for lunch. I'm here at Killern Primary School at the foot of the Campsies. Drew, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you very much. Nice to see you again, Vic. Yeah, nice to see you too. What a beautiful day. Now, what are we going to be doing today then, Drew? Is the powers of persuasion? That's um, part of what we'll be doing. We'll be talking about communication and how communication is not just words. It's much more than that. Communication involves empathy and involves rapport and that sometimes the words only play a very small part. OK, well, let's go and sign in so that uh, we're all official and above board here at the school. Here, is this the main entrance? Oh, there's a buzzer here. Oh, that looks like... Thank you very much. As it happens, uh, the teacher that's let us in is Pat McCarron, the head teacher. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Do you know what's in store today? Uh, I've heard that it's something to do with the brain and the, the, the amazing potential of the brain, so I'm really looking forward to finding out what it is, as are all the children, I have to say. I think we'll have a lot of fun with it. Well, fun <laughs> is always good. I like fun. Oh, right. <laughs> shall, we, uh, shall we head along to the classroom or where uh, we're yes. going to do the demonstrations and experiments today? See how I'm remembering to say that, Drew, now instead of tricks. <laughs> As a former army interrogator, Drew spent years studying every aspect of communication. And it's these very same skills he uses to astound his audiences. My stage show is almost entirely built on being able to build empathy and rapport with somebody, get inside their shoes and then get one step ahead of them. Can you just explain a bit more about um, how children will sort of improve themselves, what they're going to learn? I'm going to be teaching them a bit about communication and there's a lot of different levels, whether that be using body language, non-verbal cues, micro-expressions, all the psychological side. But we're not going to be concentrating so much on the words, but rather on persuasive techniques behind the words. Right, OK, so you're going to alert the kids to some of these persuasive techniques that you find in the modern world. I'm going to teach them some of the techniques as well so that they can use them. So we're going to have a classroom of salesmen. I think part of it is that when a child can communicate rather than just concentrating on words but knows how to get the point across, they would recognise it and be able to use that themselves. And a lot of that comes down to things like empathy, being able to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Children sometimes find that difficult. Now that the kids in this class are going to be going up to high school, that's very important. And being able to see things from a teacher's point of view makes all the difference. So what does our class's current teacher, Fiona Hornbuckle, make of their communication skills? They're very good at communicating, um, verbally and non-verbally. something we've worked a lot on this year. OK, great. And what are they like as a class? They're fantastic. They're enthusiastic and they're full of energy and they'll, they'll give you lots and lots of feedback today. They're, they're ready for you. Hi, everyone. How are you doing this afternoon? You all right? Yes! Oh, yes, that's good. Yes. Oh, you, you guys are really enthusiastic. I'm going to introduce right now a very special man, and you're going to have a lot of fun with him this afternoon, Mr. Drew McAdam! <laughs> I do a lot of shows all around the country, and I do a kind of mind reading. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you some of the ways to do it, because at the end of the day, what really matters is when we're talking with our minds, we're communicating in ways that we don't realise. Somebody um, can get ready to catch 
That. Hi there, what's your name? Lewis. Lewis, can you just stand up for one second, please? Um, Lewis, would you throw that to somebody else? <laughs> Hi there, can you stand up, what's your name? Eleanor. Eleanor. Can you take that and just throw it to somebody else as well? Hi there, can you stand up? What's your name? Christina. Christina. Here's what we're going to do. In a moment, each of you are going to think of a two-digit number. I've written something down just now. We will come back to it. It is important. We will come back to it. So a two-digit number. Um, do you have a, a two-digit number in your mind just now? Don't change your mind. Don't change your mind. Don't change your mind. Lewis, tell everybody what number you're thinking of. Twelve. What number are you thinking of? Sixty-five. Sixty-five. What number are you thinking of? Twenty-seven. Can you tell everybody what I'd written down there? I am thinking of the number 67. Not a good start. Has Drew's mind powers deserted him? Of course not. You were thinking of 65, I was thinking of 67. Could you open up the envelope and just read yes. out what's written inside? Eleanor will be closest, but will be out by two. Give Eleanor a round of applause. She did well. Thank you very much. You can take your seats now. Thank you. I want to know how to do that. You want to know how to do that? Excellent. Because I want to tell you about communication. What, what, what do you think communication is? Talking to somebody. Talking. See, that's what most people think, talking. But you saw me there and I was communicating in a different way. Now, it appeared to be mind-to-mind -mind communication. It's not. Does anybody know what psychic means? I'm not at all. Everything that I was doing was based on science. You're all going to high school next year, yes? Mm -hmm. Are we excited? Are we frightened? A little bit of both? Excited. Excellent. And frightened, somebody who's honest. <laughs> but you can go there, you can be more confident, and you can communicate and get done what you want done the way you want it done. And we'll be back at Killer and Primary later to find out just how to do that. Somebody else who's taking the next step into a wider world is trainee solicitor Claire Jackson. It's a job where communicating the right impression is critical. First of all, I suppose I would want a member of the public coming in to be able to trust me. I would want them also to feel like I knew what I was talking about. Friendliness as well. You do want them to think you're a friendly person, somebody that they can open up to, as well as somebody who's professional. We went along to Edinburgh University's legal practice unit to see what Drew can teach someone like Claire about getting that solicitor-client relationship off on the right foot. To start with, we organised a mock-up interview with an actor playing the part of a nervous new client and Drew observing from the back of the room. Okay, um, the purpose of today is basically for you to tell me everything that you possibly can about why you're here to see me. It's basically a fact-finding um, mission rather than anything else at the moment. If you'd like to just start and tell me why you're here to see me. Okay, um, my husband and I, we had a conservatory built. Okay. Elaine Tyre is a tutor at the university. When a client comes to visit a solicitor, the client generally has a problem and the solicitor's role is to solve that problem and therefore interviewing the client in a way that all the facts come out is terribly important. And you can only do that once you have listened and also have got the trust of the client so that when you do say, actually, I wouldn't be going down that route, they will believe you. Basically, the works, it's, we're not happy with what's happened and we've been charged a lot more and it's not... It's not right, it's the wrong windows than we chose and the doors don't work. Um, Drew asked our actor Aileen how she felt Claire had performed. Well, she got up quickly to, to greet me but forgot to introduce herself, so I didn't really know who I was speaking to. Um, she shook my hand, which was nice, but it was quite a weak handshake, so it didn't instil confidence straight away. Um, I was feeling very nervous and I don't feel that she actually managed to put me at ease at any point. I, I could see from where I was sitting, she was sitting very forward, her legs were crossed, she created a barrier across the front of her with her hand while she was making notes and she obviously felt uncomfortable and that was reflected in you. How did you feel about her level of eye contact? Um, sometimes it was hidden behind her fringe 
um, she leaned forward and her hair hid her face quite a few times. And she was obviously very professional in what she was saying. Yes, yes. Her, her actual words and her delivery were good. But from my vantage point, I could see that she felt very uncomfortable. It was making you very uncomfortable. And it wasn't eliciting any kind of sense of confidence. Would that be fair? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what's Drew's assessment? I would say that um, Claire obviously knows her subject and knows it very well. However, in terms of actual social interaction, there were a few problems, mainly to do with her expressing any confidence that she might have felt uh, and even faking that, because even if you don't feel it, you can fake it till you make it. Her eye contact was not great. Her greeting was not great. There was actually no part of it which she would have scored many points. But these are all things that can be changed. How would you have felt when you actually left the room? Disappointed um, and possibly thinking, I wonder if I should go somewhere else. Well, what I'll do now is I'm going to spend some time with Claire and then we'll try it again and see if there's any improvement. And we'll see just how they get on later. Back at Killern Primary, Drew's about to show the kids just how powerful a tool communication can be. Try this. Everybody take the index finger of your left hand. Touch the top of your head. Touch your forehead. Touch the bridge of your nose. Touch the tip of your nose. Touch your lips. Touch your cheek. That's your chin you're all touching. See, I said touch your cheek even though I touched my chin and you all responded to what you were seeing rather than what you were hearing so I was influencing you to do what I wanted you to do does anybody find that just a little bit scary yeah. that somebody somebody can mess with your mind without you being aware that they're doing it and I need you to know that there are people out there that will do that sort of thing there are salespeople, for example, or even people who want you to do something that you know that you shouldn't. Would you like to play a game? Yes! yes. Okay, no, no, that's not good enough. Would you like to play a game in which you could win a £50 note? Yes! <laughs> See, you bring cash into the equation and suddenly everybody's a lot more interested. I have five envelopes. They are numbered five, four, three, two and one. Now, one of the envelopes and only one has a £50 note in it. If any of you end up with the envelope with a £50 note, you get to keep it. So, with the stakes raised, Drew's about to show the pupils what a master of persuasion he is. All he has to do is make sure at the end of the game he's left holding the right one. Which number of envelope would you like? Number four. Number four, OK. You seem way too keen, I have to say. I'm going to make it a little bit easier for you though, I will tell you this, I've played this game 17 times in the last month, 15 times out of 17, the money was in envelope number two. Um, which number of envelope would you like? Number three. Oh, you didn't let me influence you there at all, did you? That leaves you five, two and one, which number of envelope would you like? Yes, you. Yeah. <laughs> number five, okay. Don't open the envelope yet. I haven't used you for anything yet, have I? Which would you like, number one or number two? Wrong or right, whichever is left is yours. One. Number one, okay, can you take that for a second? Thank you. Leaving you know who with envelope number two. If you've got envelope number three, you can now open your envelope and take out the completely valueless piece of paper that you'll find inside. Oh, you've got one pound note. Just a quick question, would you like to swap with me? <coughs> You don't have to. No. Excellent. You can open your envelope and take out the completely valueless piece of paper that you'll find inside as well. Who else has got one? Number three down and four and five soon follow, leaving just one pupil standing. Can you step forward for one second? This is envelope number one. What's your name? Amy. Amy. I'm going to let you swap back and forward for a little while here and then you can settle on whichever one it is you want. But would you like to swap straight away? No. Okay, well, well try that. Just feel that one. OK, give me it back. So I told you all along, envelope number two, that's usually where it goes. Would you like to swap? No, thanks. Amy, please swap. No, thanks. 
Amy, I am telling you, I am telling you, the money is in this envelope. I want to keep number one. Even though I'm telling you the money's in this envelope. Yeah. I'm going to count from five down to zero. In fact, we all are. At any time, Amy, you can say swap and we will swap envelopes. But once we reach zero, that's it. You're opening that envelope and you're only getting what's in there. Okay? okay? Yep. Everybody? Five, Five four, four, three, three two, two, one. Zero. You can open your envelope. So, guess who's got the £50? Envelope number two does it again. Oh, Told you I did. Give her a round of applause. Is that real? Yeah, that's a real £50 note. Now, what I will say is this, okay, I didn't, I, one of the envelopes felt different. The reason it felt different is because it's got that in it, because I wanted the last person who would be feeling a little bit silly by now to have that. What does it say? You want a speedboat. You want a speedboat. There's your speedboat, Amy. Thank you. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Still clutching her toy speedboat, I asked Amy what it was like going one-on-one -on -one with Drew. Well, it was quite scary because he was staring at me and I didn't know what to do. But I, part of me wanted to say swap, but then I don't know, I want to stick with my first instinct kind of thing. Drew, tell me, what, did, what, were you, what was running through your mind when you were speaking to Amy in that situation? I knew that what you were thinking at that time was, I'm going to feel really silly if I swap and I've just given away the one with the £50 note in it. That's what you were thinking, wasn't it? Because that's what I would be thinking. So I knew then that you would dig your heels in. And then by changing my body language so that I looked as if I really wanted you to swap, it would convince you not to. But I can only do that if I get inside your head. Was there ever a time, Drew, when you thought uh, they were going to take number two and get that money? Eh, no. Drew went on to explain to the class just what he means by getting inside someone's head. Let's talk a little bit about something called empathy. This is what the encyclopedia says. It says, empathy is the capacity to recognise or understand another's state of mind or emotion. Does that mean anything to anybody? No. No, it doesn't really mean anything to me either. OK. Let me tell you a story which will show you what empathy actually is. I went along to this big superstore and I bought boards like that but big ones i came out and there were two concrete blocks so that people couldn't take the trolleys out so i thought i will lightly skip across the concrete block and get to my car as i jumped up onto the block my foot missed the side and i went down <laughs> now see what some of you're doing you were going oh why because i hurt myself and it's almost as if you felt my pain now that's empathy. That's being able to put yourself inside somebody else's shoes. Empathy is a very powerful communication skill. It's the ability to get into somebody else's head. It's like mind reading. And is that what you saw today? No? Did you see empathy? Did you see me reading somebody else's body language because I was able to empathise with them? So it's very, very powerful. It creates a bond between people and we need to learn how to use it. You're listening to Radio Scotland School for Genius. Earlier, we put trainee solicitor Claire Jackson through her paces in a scenario designed to test communication skills. There turned out to be quite a few areas where she could improve with Drew's help. Do you just want to take a seat just now? We're going to go over what I watched, what I saw, and I'm going to help you change that. First of all, in entering the room, something very small would have made her feel totally at ease, and that is asking her if you wanted to take her coat. Okay. That's something a friend would do. Sure. So she had a big coat on when she came in, she sat down. So the first thing is, is putting yourself in their shoes. That's where the empathy comes in, right? And think well, how she feels walking into your office, because she's more frightened than you are. The other thing is that the real person that you were speaking to there has done a lot of these. Yeah. And the one thing they always said is trainee solicitors have wet fish handshakes. <laughs> Let's try it, actually. No, 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 no. It's like that. <laughs> okay. Seriously. Right. Perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Try that. You know, I'll do it this time, right? So when you get that, yeah. as opposed to that, yeah. isn't, it, isn't it totally Much different? Better. It feels different. It, it, it just inspires that whole thing. The other thing is that what you do is you look in their eyes and think, what colour are those eyes? 
Now that's a different look you're getting from me, isn't it? Mm-hmm. There's, it creates a bond between the two people, so you're building up that rapport, literally in the first few seconds. So was Claire aware of any of that? Obviously, knowing what this was about, I was trying to have good body language and be as open as I could, and clearly I was, uh, wasn't was being that open and I could definitely improve on it. I think, though, I wasn't that surprised on the other hand because I think you're totally unaware of what you're actually like. And I think it's definitely beneficial to have somebody point it out to you because only then are you going to be able to work on it. One small thing before we finish on that is when you come up from your notes is that moving the eyes, so then the head, is what's called a predatory gaze. It's what a predator does just before it bounces. <laughs> and oddly enough, women of a certain age who are still single do that when they walk into a bar because they're looking for the guys. So they come in, their eyes scan the room, the head follows, and all the guys act like gazelles. It makes them really uncomfortable, but they don't know why. <laughs> so body language, very, very powerful. So let's have another go at helping sort out that dodgy conservatory. Can I take your jacket for you? Oh, yes, thank you. Okay, my name's Claire Jackson, um, and basically today what I'm going to try and do is... She's remembered the coat, but can she build up that empathy with our actor Aileen so that her character relaxes? Um, There's been a few phone calls just complaining, but I I just don't want to deal with her any more now at all. On that note, what I would say is don't attempt to contact her again. She's obviously not listening to you and certainly don't pay the money at the moment. Right. From what you said, that amount of money should not be due. Has <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well Did I say the same thing to you? Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm Aileen, by the way, hi. <laughs> Aileen, uh, now that you're out of character, how do you feel it went? that time? Um, It was quite different this time. Um, There was a lot more confidence from Claire. Um, There was a huge amount more of eye contact. Um, Our posture was a lot more relaxed, which made me feel more relaxed. A vast improvement, and it would have been more like watching two friends talking rather than watching a a client and a solicitor. Your body language, Claire, was much more open You must have actually felt better doing it that time. I think it did feel a lot more natural. I felt like I had immediately much more of a sort of rapport going on the first time. I just felt like you were in the room, right, what's next, right, I'll sit down and start asking you things. Whereas that time, I was much more intent on trying to make you feel comfortable. Um, I think the handshake definitely made a big difference and smiling, holding your eye contact. When you were first talking and you were still uncomfortable, I was thinking, what am I going to do now? How how am I, what's my body language like? How am I going to make you feel more comfortable? But although I was thinking all those things, I did feel much more relaxed. Just to touch on the empathy thing, the bit that really cinched it for me was when you said, definitely don't contact the woman. And I just thought, oh, thank you. You know exactly how I feel at this moment. And I, I loved you for it, because I was like, oh, such a relief. I don't have to speak to that woman again. <laughs> Going back as if we were doing it for real, had you left the office, is this somebody then with whom you would have been quite confident? Absolutely, in terms of absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So, empathy allows you to understand what's going on in someone's head and even get ahead of them. But can you actually tell them what to think? Drew had one final experiment involving yours truly. Now, I asked Vic earlier today, and he assures me that he goes to the gym. I'm not very strong, but I do go to he the gym. He is strong. He's well-built, young, fit man. Can you come up? You're quite ickle, aren't you? Do you think you'd be able to lift her up? Yeah, I think so. No, I mean, seriously, you could. Right, just put your hands underneath her armpits. You all right with this? Yeah. Right, and just lift her right up there. OK. Thank goodness. OK, look at me, Vic. Look okay. at me. Weak as a baby. Weak as a baby. Now lift her. What you're hearing is me failing to lift the smallest girl in the class. Give him a round of applause. Well done. How did that happen? That was mad. Do you remember me saying to Vic, I looked him straight in the eye, very stern, and I said, weak as a baby. 
weak as a baby and I tapped him on the forehead. Now at that point he's thinking, of course I can pick her up but something just happened there and I don't know what it is. Now that was using paralanguage, I was using a commanding style, a style of authority. And again, just because somebody says something to you in an authoritative manner doesn't make it right. That's how easy it is to convince people to do things for no reason whatsoever. And it's good to be aware what's going on because unfortunately some people will try and take advantage of you by manipulating your reactions and your situation. In the real world you could end up agreeing to something you didn't mean to or handing over your money so be observant and be aware. I think that's us done, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a big round of applause for Drew McAdam. Whoa! And you'll be relieved to hear that with a slap round the back of the head, Drew was able to return me to my normal prodigious strength. So were the pupils persuaded over the power of communication? I think it's quite scary that someone can, like, change your mind sort of thing, change what you're thinking. I thought it was really cool. Uh, what, what was the coolest part about it? I thought the, the week is the baby thing was quite cool. At first I thought all this sort of stuff, like the whole mind reading thing was a load of guff, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> and it's not now, because she can actually do it, but it's not the same sort of way as you expect it to be. In terms of communicating and being persuaded to do things, do you think that when you go to the high school, uh, you might get tricked into doing something you wouldn't want to do? Well. Right now, I would say I wouldn't, but like if I was in the situation, I probably would. Do you think um, Drew's taught you how you could maybe realise what was going on? He kind of like, he said that people can do like mind games with you and make you do stuff, but then you have to really think about the consequences and what's really going to happen. And what about their teacher, Fiona Hornbuckle? I think the children are gobsmacked, actually. I can hear the noise now. They're all trying to lift each other up and stop each other, lifting each other up. And, and it's, just, it's just something they've not experienced before. What did you personally think? I, I, think it's, I think it's fantastic, and it's such a good way of showing them you know, how their brain can perceive things in, in a different way. That's something that we've worked on this year, about risk-taking and safe risk-taking. So I think it's definitely um, they'll be using some of these skills as they go on. Well, they've been really receptive today and really up for it. Are you, are you pleased with your primary sevens then? Oh, I'm delighted with it. Apart from at the moment, they're all slapping each other in the back of the head. That's it for today's programme. You will listen to the next edition of School for Genius. You will listen to the next edition of School for Genius. And do visit the Radio Scotland website at bbc.co.uk slash Radio Scotland, following the links to BBC Learning for video clips of some of today's experiments. I'm Vic Galloway. Bye for now.